a recent discovery of a massive freshwater sea found to be buried beneath the Atlantic Ocean. This is by Laura Gegel, Associate Editor of Live Science. A gigantic freshwater aquifer has been found and it's hiding under the Atlantic Ocean saltwater just off northeastern coast of the United States. It's basically south of Martha's Vineyard. Now while this gigantic freshwater aquifer exact size is still a mystery, it may be the largest of its kind taking up a region stretching from Massachusetts to southern New Jersey, which is estimated to be about 220 miles, 350 kilometers. This area includes the coastlines of New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, and the aquifer may contain about 670 cubic miles of slightly salty water, and uh, there will be an explanation about what that means, it's slight saltiness later. The water is not young either. The researchers said that they suspect that much of this is from the last ice age. Isn't that something? Scientists got the first hints that an aquifer was hanging out under the ocean in the 1970s when companies drilling off the coast for oil sometimes hit fresh water instead. It wasn't clear whether these freshwater water deposits were isolated pockets or whether they covered a larger expanse. But about 20 years ago, the study co-researcher Kerry Key, who is now a geophysicist at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory at Columbia University in New York, began helping oil companies to pinpoint oil hotspots by using electromagnetic imaging on the subsea floor. Much like an X-ray can image a person's bones, that's what an electromagnetic image uses electromagnetic waves from static to microwaves and other high frequencies to detect objects underwater in the earth hidden from view. Now more recently, in an effort to find the freshwater deposits, Key decided to see if tweaking this technology could help him find aquifers, which are underground pools of fresh water. So in 2015, he and study co-researcher Rob Evans, a senior scientist of geology and geophysics at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in Massachusetts, spent 10 days at sea taking measurements off the coast of southern New Jersey and Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. And the researchers chose these spots because oil companies reported finding fresh water out there. But we knew that there was fresh water down there in isolated places, but we did not know the extent or geometry, and quote, this is what lead author Chloe Gustafson, doctoral candidate of marine geology and geophysics in Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory said, to investigate these areas, the researchers dropped instruments to the seafloor to measure the electromagnetic fields below. In addition, a tool towed behind the ship emitted artificial electromagnetic pulses and measured the reactions from the subsea floor. The two methods rely on a similar science. Salt water conducts electromagnetic waves better than fresh water does, so any pools of fresh water would stand out as bands of low conductance. This is what the researcher said. An analysis found that the fresh water was not scattered here and there, but was instead continuous, starting at the shoreline, extending out to the continental shelf. In some places, the aquifer stretched as far as 75 miles offshore. The feature also ran deep, starting at about 600 feet below the ocean's floor and ending at about 1,200 feet below the sea floor. If later research shows that the aquifer is larger, it could rival the Ogallala Aquifer, which is a huge freshwater pool that supplies groundwater to the eight Great Plains states from South Dakota to Texas. Now, how did the water get under the ocean? The aquifer likely came into being at the end of the last ice age. Researchers said about 20,000 to 15,000 years ago, much of the world's water was locked up in glaciers. 
making sea levels lower than they are today. As temperatures rose and the ice covered the U.S. Northeast melt, melted and the water washed away huge quantities of sediments, which formed river deltas on the still exposed continental shelf. Large pockets of fresh water from the melted glaciers then got stuck in these sediment traps. Later, sea levels rose, trapping the sediment and fresh water under the ocean. Now, today, currently, it appears that the aquifer is not stagnant. Rather, it's likely fed by subterranean runoff from the land, the researcher said, and this water is unlikely pumped seaward by the rising and falling pressures of the tides. This is what um, Key said, and he, he added that the aquifer is freshest close to the shore, getting saltier farther out, indicating that it slowly mixes with seawater over time. The fresh water near land is about one part per thousand salt, much like other terrestrial fresh water, he said, and in contrast by the aquifer's outer edges, it's about 15 parts per thousand, which is still lower than typical seawater level of 35 parts per thousand. In other words, this water would have to be desalinated before people could use it to drink it, for example, but would still be cheaper to process than regular, regular salt water, he explains. Quote, we probably don't need to do that in this region, but if we can show that there are large aquifers in other regions that might potentially represent the source in dry places such as Southern California, Australia, and the Midwest or Saharan Africa, this is what he said in a statement. Now, this study was published online June 18 in the journal Scientific Reports. And this is a diagram that uh, Key has uh, given us, Credit Gustaf Gustafsson, the uh, basement rock, the upwelling of the brines, and the onshore recharge right underneath, sitting underneath the actual seawater of the Atlantic Ocean. And again, another map by Gustafsson, and you see that the yellow hatched areas, which are around the coast, shows where the giant aquifer is hiding under the Atlantic Ocean. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece and Capota, and we also
help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.